as we've been doing, we've been in, in Proverbs 10 for the last couple of weeks, and we'll probably finish Proverbs 10. We got through, over the last couple of weeks, we got through, the, the, through verse 21, and we're going to be picking up in verse 22. Now, uh, we've been reading through the whole thing, but let me just read uh, verses 22 to the end of the chapter tonight to start. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. That's actually where we ended last week, but it's a good place to overlap for tonight. It is a sport to a fool to do mischief, but a man of understanding hath wisdom. The fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. As the whirlwind passeth, so is the wicked no more. But the righteous is an everlasting foundation. As vinegar to the teeth and as smoke to the eyes, so is the sluggard to them that send him. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. The way of the Lord is strength to the upright, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. The righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the froward tongue shall be cut out. The lips of the righteous know not what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh frowardness. And may the Lord add His blessing to His word this evening. Amen. Well, it's interesting, like I said uh, Kathy had kind of segued right into where we were starting, which is verse number 23, rather than, and, than verse 22. But before we go there, uh, any, any observations to, uh, uh, any observations of what we just read, or, or even from the past couple weeks and, and the rest of the psalm? Again, there's a lot of repetition throughout all the psalms, and we see, we see the focus being on wisdom versus foolishness. And it's important for us. Tim? Uh, verse 23, actually. Uh, I like the word that it is important to the fool to do mischief, but a man of understanding of wisdom. Amen. It's almost like a game. Like a, yeah. It, the, the word sport, actually, there, it is, it is like a game. It's fun. Uh, sport, we can think of, we, we think of, it's funny, that's where, exactly where I was going to start, right there. We, we think of uh, somebody being picked on, and they make, it, there's an old term that says they made sport of a person. You know, somebody that's, uh, you know, I, I remember being in school and, and how mean everybody was, not just to, to certain people. If you had somebody that was slower than others, they got picked on. If you had somebody that's smaller than others, they got picked on. I was the runt of the class for a while. I got, I got picked on by the bigger kids. It was, it was simple. They made sport of me. They liked to go up and kick me and stuff, and I settled that by pulling a guy's leg and grinding his face to the pavement. He never picked on me again. <laughs> You know, so that's what you have to do is stand up you know, for yourself. But right here, the word sport actually means uh, del delirious laughter. They laugh. You know, and that's exactly what we did to the, the impoverished, those that were weaker than us. We, we laughed at them. I'll claim I did that in high school and stuff, and that's a, it's, a human, it's a human trait that we have. We do pick on those. I, I can remember, I can remember and, and being like six, seven years old, you don't have any understanding of things going on. We had a little boy that lived across my, the street from my best friends. He had leukemia or cancer. And he was bald, and nobody knew why, so they picked on him for his bald head, you know, without understanding. You know, and that's what happens with, with anybody. With the ungodly, they'll do so even more so. Does that sound right? Do so even more so. That, sound, that sounds right. So uh, it's a sport. To a fool to do mischief. They get a kick out of it, exactly. You know, it's, 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 they love it. They love to do mischief. They like to cause trouble. And then, then the, the second part, but a man of understanding hath wisdom. Again, wisdom is knowing when to not say things and when to say things or when to act and when not to act. You know, and it's, it's amazing how we see all the world around us, and it's, and it's all about rejection of God. You know, it's, I see pictures of people, people bringing the gospel to places, and there are people with like LGBTQ, RSTUV, W signs, 
they're yelling, going bananas over a guy that's simply talking about the scriptures. It's crazy. It's, a, it's worse than Trump derangement syndrome from a few years ago. It's like these, guys, these people are demonic. I think Mike said it earlier. You know, they're, they're, I think I inflected the D a little much. Demonic. Yeah. They're, you know, they're, they're full of just, just incredible wickedness. And to, uh, to malign people who are only looking out for their good, it's, it's amazing how it happens, but it happens all the time. But thank, thank the Lord we have His Word that we can grow. Anybody else have something? All right, we'll continue. Good, seeing we started there, a good place to stay. Start, Kathy? Oh, yeah, I would just say that the over, it seems like the after that verse, the overview is the rest of the Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And it's, it's something that you, you grow into, right? We can all admit that when we were younger, we weren't exactly the wisest people in the world. And sometimes when we're older, we're still not the wisest people in the world. But we do learn. You learn from less. You learn lessons. So I always, I always say that every 16-year-old seems like they know everything. Until they get old, they realize, boy, you know, my parents were right. <laughs> you know, so that that kind of thing. It's uh, it's part of growing. And us as believers, we have the added benefit where we don't only, only grow in the wisdom that we get from personal experience, we get the wisdom of the Lord through the Word, which is just so amazing because it's available right there. We don't have to go to the school of hard knocks to, to get into the Scriptures. It's right there for us. Amen. Anything else? That, uh, or if we want to continue on? Like I said, I'm, I'm not... Uh, I've not previously studied on, on, these, on the, the Proverbs here because it's kind of fun just to go through it you know, together like this. So, uh, so it's a sport. or it's, They get great enjoyment and laughter out of... Out of uh, where am I? Oh, I lost my place here for a second. Uh, it is a sport to a fool to do mischief. To do mischief. You know, just to do things that are against the Lord, against proper conduct in society. Uh, in the New King James, says evil instead of mischief. Instead of mischief, yeah. It says evil. Yeah. You know, what probably, what probably happens with that is there's different words that are available, you know, that explain the same thing, just like in, in English. I think that's what happens with the King James is they put they put different words, you know, just like we have in English. You know, can, you, can we think of some words that we use to describe the same thing? You know, you know, like well, yeah, a, a lot of that, especially with like the, the King James. Yeah. Uh, the language has changed in a way that uh, you know when you look at the dictionary now, yeah. there's like four different def definitions yep. for a word. What we have maybe the primary, the number one. Right. Maybe it used to be like number four. Right. The way I know about mischief, how I want to say it, mischief is not evil. It's that's right. Really, it's, it's a naughty, but you cannot call it evil. Right. I think that what it means is evil. Yeah. It means evil in the old English. Yeah. Well, what, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're all we're all evilly mischievous or mischievously evil. You know, when we start out, uh, like one word and. And I'll, I'll cover this more in detail when we get to it. And as in, and as in uh, Acts chapter 12, verse 4, the King James keeps Easter there, which was the common English translation for Pascha, you know, from, through the early, the early English translations. And it's a perfectly fine translation, but they kept it there. And, and the, the translators, the King James, says we put different uses to, to, to show the different words that can be used and so that people will want to look and see what this means. You can say, why did they keep this? Another one is uh, the word testament and covenant. It's both the same word in, in, in Greek. But yet, there's some places the King James translators put it as testament and some put it as covenant. Same word, but they, I think they made a separation between testament being for the church and covenant being for the Jews. They made that distinction. And that's not necessarily 100% correct either, but it was, it was a good try anyways. 
So different things like that and the translations and neat. Uh, and then you have, you have some places that skip entire, uh, entire verses you know, as well. Yeah, so it's neat. Some, I just saw a screenshot of, of uh, John chapter 5 out of the ESV, and they skip verse 4. Totally. They, you know, it's, a, it's about the, uh, the, the, para, the paralytic going to the, uh, the, the, the water. And they put the whole part about you know, why he was there, because the angel stirred in the water. That was taken out. You know, and some would say, well, the King James translators added it. You know, so there's that whole controversy, which I'll stay out of it. But, uh, but most, most translations have put it in parentheses anyways. The, 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 the ESV claims to keep both, you know, okay. but, I, I know it was 1901 yeah, okay. yep, the, uh, it was the RSV originally, and the NRSV yeah. took a, did, did a whole lot of crazy things with the text, and the ESV was to clean that up, <laughs> but the problem, and I, I, I smoked the ESV for a little while, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I never inhaled it, but, uh, but, but one of the problems, and, and one of the problems with that particular translation is this. Uh, the, it, it, it doesn't have any italics in it. Italics are important in, in the text. Italics show that this was added for clarity by the translators. The ESV doesn't do that. And then it doesn't give you any reason why they skipped an entire passage either. So, but that's enough on on that, anyways. But uh, Helen. Yeah. Yep. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so it's, you know, it tends to no good. That's how we can put it. <laughs> it's something wrong, you know, the person that rejects uh, wisdom and, and would make fun of, of, uh, of the Lord, you know, especially, you know, all of those things that expect, encapsulate that. So, so it's a, the sport to do fool, to, mis to, to do mischief, but a man of understanding hath wisdom. You know, first we get the understanding. So many people try to get wisdom without the understanding of the Bible, and it's not impossible. You know, try to, you know, have like five things that you can do, and you'll have your situations totally underhand. Your, your finances will be cleared up if you just follow my five steps. Your marriage will be cleared up if you just follow my five steps and go to my series, and, and you find out you've got to keep on growing wisdom and understanding for a long time and then um, eventually all those things will grow or not those things but you will grow in those things go to what's that 20 bucks, for each one of 20 bucks for each step yeah yeah it's just yeah so let's see there's five ten mention ten there's 200 bucks right now on the plate right there we go Amen. yeah if you yeah if you just sign up for every single class down the road and you're good <laughs> But yeah, but that's how that's how it works, you know. That, that's how much of the world around us works. Much how much of the church around us works as well. Uh, I heard an interesting discussion recently. It was talking about how do you treat people who don't believe and they come into the church. And I said my response was, you keep teaching the Bible. That's it, you know. And so many places change, you know, what they do need to have special secret sensitive services, a special evangelical service. I think the gospel should be no matter what you're doing, but it's amazing how people will just look at the Word of God and they'll have an interest. One person I can think of is, is he passed away and is with the Lord now, was Matt Gregus when he, when he came. He came out of curiosity. Yeah, he was he was a Rome, he was a full fledged Roman Catholic. He was getting tired of what uh, some of the priests were doing and all that thing, 
and he came and you couldn't get him away from here. You know, and he was just growing, just learning and growing. And I never went and you know, changed the message that, so that we could make it more comfortable for him. Matter of fact, I, there were times I thought he was going to walk out. But, but he was looking for understanding and wisdom. That's what the Lord is looking for, us to just desire that understanding and wisdom and growing. And part of that is understanding who he is and what he's done. Here I go with the gospel. And he died on the cross, was buried and rose again for us. That's the ultimate in, in growth and the ultimate in wisdom. Amen? Anything else before I move on here? Where were we? we still haven't gotten out of verse 23, did we? <laughs> now look at, look at verse number, number 24. The fear of the wicked, the fear of the wicked, it. I keep on losing my place in here. My, my tablet's not working right with me. So, the fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him. What, what it? The fear? The fear, the, what he's afraid of will come upon him. You know, what, what's the wicked most afraid of? Truth. Truth. Amen. Anything else? Judgment. That's right. I was going to say getting caught, but that you know, encapsulates both. You know, most people who, most fools enjoy what they're doing, and the one thing they're looking at is, how can I not get caught? Because I'm going to face judgment. I'm going to face truth. You know, that's so true. You know, we think of that when we're you know, doing something trivial as speeding. I hope there's not a cop around that corner. You know, we're afraid. It's natural. It's a natural thing that we do. It's kind of a shame right now. You know, we see what's going on. And yeah. You see, you see city leaders just standing down and letting, yeah. letting things happen. Yeah. And the police are now, too. They, they, they have fear of losing their jobs, fear of, of what's going to happen to them, all kinds of things. So. I think everyone's going to end up at the top. They may lose their jobs. Well, they'll... Uh, End up those that think they'll be on the top will end up being cut, and they'll be all be on the bottom. That's what'll happen. And uh, I don't want to be in the people's shoes that are, you know, just turning a blind eye on on things that are happen happening and everything. It's it's rather foolish. Yeah, yeah, and that's the that's the the gravest thing because justice is justice is for all. You know, it's, it's supposed to be blind for all individuals. There's supposed to be justice when you break the law. So you can't let any particular group, no matter who it is, get away with things because it, it just el- escalates and elevates things rather than looking to the Lord. Again, it's all, all part of laughing at the Lord, you know, mocking Him, His backward ways. Yeah. Husband and wife and having children and you know, it's laughed at now by, by those that hate God. You know, it's, it's crazy. What verse now again? Verse still 24. But the desire of the righteous shall be granted. I think of Psalm 37, I think is. The desire of the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. What do we desire? We desire, Gordon said it about the fools, they're looking for truth. We desire truth. We desire the Lord. We desire what He has. We desire peace and all those other things that come with it. And it's through righteousness that's given by God. Man, I, I, think, I even think of, uh, I think it was George Washington or John Adams, I can't think of it right now, but even our laws are for the righteous, not the unrighteous. Our form of government is for the righteous and not the unrighteous. You know, that's who it's for. Law-abiding citizens. That's who the Bible is, is for. It's for Christians. No, that's right. The, you know, they don't pay attention. I saw something today. Well, a guy at work told me about the... Maybe you, maybe you know something about, about this. Deanna uh, working in a bank that when you go in, you're required to wear face masks to go to the bank when when they open some are open now some open next week or the week after but uh but you have to go in and take off your mask and smile for the camera who's going to do that 
It's going to be the law-abiding citizens. The guy that's going to cause trouble isn't going to care about the camera. He's going to cause trouble no matter what. So I, I think the whole thing is just warped. But, but all those rules, it's the, it's the righteous that follow. You know, gun laws. Oh, I was just going to say that. Yeah. Make more laws. Make more laws for, to be broken. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Make more laws not to be obeyed by criminals who are lawless. So, so we have righteousness. Uh, so the, right, the desire of the righteous shall be granted. Look at verse 25. As the whirlwind passes, so is the wicked no more. Poof, they're gone. The whirlwind. Just as they think they have success, boom, right out the window. Gone. And look at the second part. But the righteous is an everlasting foundation. You know, there's, there's no law that can be made against the truth. And what does it say? Uh, uh, in 1 Corinthians, I think, I can't even think of it right now. Huh? Yeah, we know it. Yeah, we know it. Yeah, I just can't think of it yeah, right now. There is no law. Yeah, the, the, the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5. Yeah, the, the fruit of the Spirit is peace, love, mercy, all those things. Against such there is no law. But the law is against all the things that are against it. Malice and hate, all those things. That's what the law is for. You know, if you live godly and have his godly understanding, you have nothing to fear. And it's an everlasting foundation. Uh, verse number, number 26 I love this part here. Uh, as vinegar to the teeth and as smoke to the eyes, so is the sluggard to them that send him. Let's think. Go take a big swig of vinegar. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll tell you something I, I did. This isn't quite vinegar. It's worse. It was moxie. Oh. Yeah. I... I He's now my brother-in-law. Huh? He's offended. What? He, you like Moxie? Well, you'll, you'll, you'll enjoy this, though. I have, I have a, uh, have a brother-in-law who wasn't my brother-in-law. We were co-workers together. And he had this penchant. He loved orange soda. He loved orange soda. And if he saw an orange can at the end of the table when he came back from break, he would grab that can and go like that, like a wise guy. He'd swig it. I got sick and tired of him taking my orange soda. So I went down to Goretti's, and they had Diet Moxie in the soda machine. And then at the time, it was like 25 cents for a can, so I'm dating myself. So I bought that can of Moxie, and I put that. It's an orange color can. And I put that into the table, and I sat back with everybody else and waited for him to come flying out the door, into the door. And lo and behold, just as now I know it's foreknowledge because I know him, he, he walked in or ran in, and he saw that can, and just like a shock to blood, he was on it, and he grabbed it, and <laughs> next thing you know, there's a shower of moxie. <laughs> all over the place and he let out some words that I can't say to this day <laughs> who did this and what is this and I just laughed at him he never took my can again I was safe <laughs> I was safe the orange soda grabbing fiend had been taken care of but how did I get into that? Oh yeah, the <laughs> vinegar, vinegar and moxie, the same thing. Uh, I have uh, the the acidity of the of the vinegar. It can if you ever have open sores or something where you you brush your teeth too hard, it'll sting. It'll be painful, uh, and and uh, all kinds of things. And and the smoke, we know what the smoke does to it. It stings. It burns. The eyes, we all know that. I love campfires, but I can't be around them because of the smoke. You know, it's, it, they burn, they sting. That's, so is the sluggard to them that send him. So it's, 
So is the person that's, that, that, that is lazy and all those things, they're just like, just like vinegar and smoke to the eyes, to, to those that send for him or that send him. Sending you off to a, a, a job or something like that. And, and if one is lazy and not doing the job correctly, it's, it's compared as being like this, the vinegar and, and the smoke. I've had this happen to, I'll, I'd like to share these things. You recommend somebody for a job. Somebody refers, looks for a reference, and you give them a reference because you know them, then you hear back and say, why did you send that person? It's kind of like the same thing, and it, it just hits you like that. It's like, oh man, I, I, I had to stop referring, like, like uh, getting relatives of mine jobs because it happened that way. You know, because they would try to help them out and it turns out it doesn't work well. You know, friends I had, so you have to judge according to what their abilities are. And, uh, and that's, what, that's what it takes. It goes right along with the wisdom and, and the foolishness, you know, as well. Then uh, verse number 40, uh, 27, I need my glasses back on. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. You know, that's pretty simple, I think. You know, you do stupid things, you have a higher chance of ending your life. If you're righteous and try to be clean and try to, try to have the understanding of the Lord, try to be godly, uh, there's less of a chance that, that you're going to come to an early death. Even though by all means we know that these aren't guaranteed because what stops us from the asteroid that falling that, uh, or anything right on top of us, you know? Gordon had sent me a picture, and some people actually believed it, that he, he told me that. It was a picture of an asteroid out, where was that, New Mexico? Or Arizona or someplace where an asteroid, and the caption of it, this, this landed so close to the visitor center. <laughs> and people actually believed that that was something new, that, that wow, that really happened? <laughs> Not that they put the visitor center you know, next to where the asteroid hit. You know, so it's the same kind, the same kind of thing, you know. You know, deal, the old, uh, what's the old expression? You play with fire, you're going to get burned. Do we have any other expressions like that? You know, there's a bunch of them I can't think of right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's true. You know, we, uh, we do get car insurance and all that stuff to protect us from, hopefully not ourselves. <laughs> but from other people who are, you know, who cause the accidents. That's the main reason we get insurance. But our own actions, we, we should be living according to knowledge and understanding and wisdom. It does prolong our days, you know, and, uh, and so on. Verse 28, the hope of the righteous shall be gladness. I can't think of anything but the blessed hope from 1 Corinthians 15. That talk about gladness. You know, but the but even the hope of eternity, the hope, even even being righteous, and again, we're not self-righteous. We have the imputed righteousness of Christ. Even that righteousness on a day-to-day -day level gives us hope and gives us gladness. I'm thankful that we can sing this world is not my home, I'm just passing through. I'm thankful that all, all those things, and we can even, no matter what's going on in the world around us, yes, can it affect us for a minute or two or three, or maybe even a year, but eventually it doesn't affect us because we have a hope that's, that's eternal, that's in the heavens with Christ. We have, we have the hope of glory, yeah, Christ in us, the hope of all glory. So the hope of the righteous, gladness. Notice the shall be is in italics. I like that. The hope of the righteous, gladness. Right there. We have, an, we have a present hope in eternal glory. But the expectation of the wicked shall perish. What kind of expectation does the w wicked have? Hey, I'm asking you. You first. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they turn to dirt. Standing before God and, and, and kneeling before Him, bowing down and declaring Him to be Lord. 
you think they'd wise up and realize that it's a lot better to, to look at Jesus as Lord today rather than wait until the future. You know, even, even the earthly expectations of, of the wicked. Yeah, yeah, even, you know, I deserve, I deserve all this. Yeah, yeah. Right. 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 So that and and also the expectation of the wicked it has there's no heavenly expectation. The expectation of the of the wicked they will probably never never get their dream. They'll never get what they they desire. They'll get something else which they won't like too much called judgment. Right, right. Never. That's a good one, right there. Never satisfied. This is true. Nothing can satisfy the flesh of man. You're always looking for more. But when you have everything that God has has given, we don't have we don't have to have any more. You know, this isn't it for us. Boy, imagine that. Imagine if this were it. If if this were our best life now, <laughs> we'd be in trouble. You know, we, we, we would be in trouble. So that's why we look forward to the future hope that we have and, and, and the glory of, of the Lord. And then the verses, I think we'll finish this in the next couple of minutes here. The way of the Lord is strength to the upright. You Christians, you use the Bible and Jesus as a crutch. Darn right I do. <laughs> it's not a crutch because I'm weak. Well, I am weak in one way, but it's not because I'm not stronger physically than you or anything. I use it because it's the only way that we have forgiveness of sin is through Christ Jesus alone. The way of the, the Lord is strength to the upright, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. The righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. I think that's a way of the way of the righteous in Christ will go to heaven, but the wicked will go to hell. I think that's a simple, even more simple translation for that. And in verse 31, oh, we, we are going to make it. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the forward tongue shall be cut out. Remember old blasphemy laws from the Puritans? You saw a set, set a swear or something, <laughs> they just rip your tongue right out. That was, that was the old days. You know, we don't want that eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. But literally, literally, they're going to lose their, uh, their way of speaking. You know, it's uh, the mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the froward tongue shall be cut out. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable. What is acceptable? You know, we learn and we, we grow and we discern the acceptable things of the Lord. You know, what, what's expected of Him. You know, I can make that pretty simple. The ex expectation of the Lord for us is that we trust Him. That's a simple expectation. And so often we don't. We, we're humans and we, our trust, our faith sometimes fails. So what's the answer to that? Trust Him. <laughs> it gets easier. So the lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh frowardness. It speaks, it speaks against, it speaks foolish, it speaks uh, the things not of the Lord. Then verse 31, oh, I did that one already. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, pervert. Yeah, perverted is the most uh, the most uh, way, and and perverse is it's crooked. You know, it's not always we think of it as just a one one thing that it's you know sexual impurity or whatever, but it's 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 anything crooked and instead of being straight to the point. You know, uh, perverted theology is stuff that doesn't it doesn't cut it straight, doesn't cut cut the word straight. It's yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, out of bounds. Yeah, that's run crooked. So, but any uh, anything else to add? Oh, looking at the message. There we go. Oh boy. No, no.
Hmm. <laughs> yes, a stagnant swamp. That's not even close. Verse 29 says, uh, God is a solid backing to a well lived life, but he called into question a shabby performance. Shabby? Oh, wow. I should bring that into work with me. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> oh wow, uh, twenty-eight. We have aspirations of good people and then celebration. The ambitions of bad people crash. 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 That's. Well, well, I'm glad. I'm glad we have a message that hasn't really changed in many years. <laughs> you know, you know it's. It's it's crazy the because uh, because where it says in verse thirty one what what did it say in the message Tim uh, at the end where it says the forward tongue shall be sh- sh- shabby and it said oh that was not, that was a different one uh, the last thirty two was the speech of a good person clears the air the words of the wicked polluted um, the shabby one was twenty eight nine a good person smelt the clear found the wisdom and fell out a stagnant swamp a stagnant swamp and. Uh, literally, literally, it's cut out is a word that literally means uh, uh, to cut out or to consumed. So I don't think of a shabby, or, uh, I'm getting my things mixed up, a polluted swamp as being something that's consumed. It probably should be. <laughs> but thanks for sharing that wisdom with us. That was good. So, but anyways, that's, so that's, that's Proverbs 10. Again, a lot of repetition in through all the proverbs and i think that's by design for us because we need it we need the repetition i almost said reputation but the repetition of of the word of god and everything just just conti- uh showing us to continue in his righteousness and don't be a fool because if you do don't continue in his righteousness you'll turn into a fool we'll, we'll be looking at our own ways and and our feelings for to get our uh our theology from rather than what the word says and all right that's all i have anybody have anything in closing or or anything at all